What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Crystal for those who are new here and today I am taking you guys through everything about Coachella. My first experience, car camping, all of it so that next year if you decide to go you are more well prepared and maybe that this video is a little bit selfish because I think I'm gonna go again and want to remember all the things I wish I did before going car camping this year. Before we get into the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to Anna Luisa. If you have not heard of Anna Luisa, have you been living under a rock? They are an amazing, high quality, affordable jewelry brand. And they're actually my first sponsorship ever. And I promise you guys, I would not be shouting them out in this video if I did not believe in the company themselves. And they are absolutely amazing from the jewelry pieces that they have to caring about our earth and having sustainable packaging. And you know that Mother's Day is coming up and if you forgot, it's on May 6th and they have a sale going on right now, which is buy one, get one 40% off. And you can actually use my link in the description below. For me, Mother's Day is super important. I have been living in San Diego for over six years now and I only see my mom and my family twice every year. It's hard for me not being around them, so I just wanted to surprise my mom this Mother's Day with a little gift of appreciation for everything that she has done in my life. And I'm actually going to be sending her this beautiful, elegant bracelet I picked out for her. It reminds me so much of her and hopefully she loves it. But like I said, the sale is buy one, get one 40% off. So, you know, whether you buy it for your mom, your mother-in-law, I think that Anna Luisa is great for every type of woman out there. And I'm sure you will find something that they will love. Thank you so much, Anna Luisa. Again, please check them out below. So how we prepared for Coachella. The first thing I want to talk about is food because I feel like you can save so much at Coachella if you're camping and you, you do it right. For us, what we did is we had a group of 20 people, but two different food groups. And the group that I was in, there was probably like a group of 10 of us. And we each Venmoed one person $100 to be a part of the pot they were using for our budget for food, utensils, and things like that. But before we went into the store and he got the food, he actually made an Excel sheet. He had the meals that he was planning to buy. If there was anything else people could bring, like condiments, utensils, and things like that. And that way you can see what you have and what you don't necessarily need to spend your money on if someone already has it. But basically after that, after he saw what everyone could bring, he went to Costco and bought all the things that we needed um, with our budget. And honestly, I think doing this, if you plan out your foods correctly, if you know how many people are there, how much you would, you know, need then that helps so much because the food in Coachella is expensive and then you know I would say you know get like one meal there a day but that would just be my one tip if you are trying to save some sort of money but in terms of like our sleeping situation I was sharing a tent with my boyfriend and we live in an apartment we don't really have that much storage space plus we're not big campers so there was like really no need for us to go out and buy like a big tent for us to sleep in so what I actually did is I went on REI and you're able to rent tents from them. So we ended up renting tents and then two sleeping mattresses and that costed us around like $40 each for four days, which was not expensive at all. And then in terms of like the actual campsite, you know, lucky for us, like I said, we don't have storage in our house, so we don't keep around canopies, but our friends did um, each have a canopy for each of the cars, which was really nice. So I would suggest for each car, each of their own canopies. Um, and if you can't find a canopy, I guess you could find one on Amazon. I don't know if you're able to rent any from like REI or Dick's Sporting Goods or anything like that, but I know they do have some on Amazon. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I really need to prepare before coach. Most of it was gathering all the materials, so making sure that you have lights. I think something that we loved having was like little like tapestries to lay on the floor while we were getting ready. So if there wasn't enough chairs, people can just sit instead of just sitting on the grass. Tables are super important, coolers. We had guys who brought in stoves so they could cook. Um, and I think there's like a certain type of stove you need to bring in, which you would just have to check the Coachella, what you can bring in and what you can't bring in. And then me and Julian actually ended up buying chairs as well because we wanted somewhere to sit when we were in the tent because the tent does get hot by like 10. And I can put 
everything I got in the description below. I also watched this other girl on YouTube um, and this other guy and I linked actually both of their videos to this because this was so helpful for me when I was trying to plan for Coachella and figuring out what I needed. So if you need to look for more essential stuff, you can look at their videos as well and compare it to what I've been saying here because they might have mentioned something that I just didn't think of. But that's basically how I prepared for Coachella in terms of like food, what we bring for our sleeping, sleeping situation. So the day of camping, I think this is so important to know because if you're like me, you just want to know like how does this go? What do they do? What is the process like from waiting outside the gate, driving there to getting to your campsite? So again, like I mentioned, we had a group of 20 people and they were all veterans and they knew that they wanted to be there right when the gates opened. Because we live in San Diego, it's a three hour drive to Indio. So everyone left San Diego around nine-ish and we all got there around midnight, 12.31 ish, where we met at a Walmart that was closest to Coachella. And once everyone was there, we went to the gate to wait because apparently they were able to do that the years before. But this year, they were not letting anyone line up the gate. We ended up going to a Ralph's that was closer than the Walmart ven venue, and lo and behold, there was everyone else who was camping that were waiting there. So we did have to wait about two or three hours. I think we left Ralph's around three, and that's when they opened up the gates. On the website, it does say, I think that the gates open at nine, but they do let people in a little bit earlier. But when you get into the gates, what will happen is you'll go in, you'll be waiting, and the first thing you go through is just security check. And they have each person, or they had us at least, each person come out the car, they patted us down, they asked us to open a few of the bags, to look in the bags and to see if there was anything that shouldn't have been there. I will say because we were one of the first cars to get into the campsite, I don't think they had like a solid process down. So I don't know if that's going to be the same experience that everyone else had. But at least that's what happened for me is they just patted me down. They looked through my my little purse that I had and some of the bags around me and we were good. All went in the car and then we drove to the next area. And I think when they do these security checks, they're mostly checking for the things that are not allowed, such as mirrors you can't bring mirrors in obviously you can try sneaking it in but there are people who go around your campsite and look if you have glass or anything metal and they will confiscate it so just a warning there i know there are people who do bring in mirrors but i think someone who brought in a mirror on our campsite it got taken away like the first day so if you're not using it just put it away and then take it out only when you need it but yeah they're checking for glass as well so that's why when you guys get handles or when we got handles from Costco, we also just got big water jugs and then we transferred the water into somewhere else and then they put the alcohol into the water jugs. That way you can bring back into the venue. So after the security game, we went to like a waiting area and this waiting area is where you can wait for all of your friends again after this you go through security. And so we were waiting about 20 minutes. And I guess another tip that I have is if you have like a car marker or something to distinguish that all of your cars are in the same group, do it. For us, we had a, just like the car marker and we wrote fry on the back of each of our windshields. And we just told a security person like, hey, like we're all in the same group. Can you make sure we're all grouped together? And also make sure you know the number of cars that are there as well because they're going to ask you how many cars should I be looking for and knowing that will just make their lives easier and will make your lives easier. I would just suggest if you are going to do the car marker situation to put it on your windows like on the side or put it on your front window or what I saw someone do that was like so smart I think each of the groups had like balloons but I thought that was really smart if you want if you have a big group of people and want to be able to easily identify who's in whose group because once you get into the line of the campsite you can't really change lanes and you don't want to be separated and that's kind of what happened to us for some reason after we all got through the waiting area we had all of our cars we got separated for some odd reason and we started telling the people but they didn't listen to us so it is what it is. So after we gathered each other, I mean, two cars got split up, but it was okay. We were still near each other. We went into the campsite. They kind of told us how to park, each of us like facing each other. So one car would go on this side, another car would go on this side, and then you would just set up your canopies and your tents and then either stay up, which that's what we did when we got in. I think we finished setting up at like 6 a.m. and the sun was coming up. 
and then we just raged day zero starting at 6 a.m. But basically that's what it's like. And then when you leave, they're a little bit stricter on when you can leave Sunday night or Monday morning. You cannot leave until Monday morning at 2 a.m. because they're just making sure for safety reasons, cars are not trying to leave while there's people still walking back from the festival. We tried to leave earlier and they wouldn't even let us line up. So we left right at 2 a.m. But that's the whole car camping experience. I will say, in terms of like showers the shower situations are not as bad as you think for me when i was watching other youtube videos everyone suggested getting like a pop-up shower tent with you know a portable shower and i ended up getting one if you are going to get a portable shower i honestly would suggest getting the ones that pump just because it's so much easier i got the one that you kind of have to hang but there was nowhere for me to hang it and i didn't really want someone to hold it for me um, but that did come in handy to like just wash my face in the mornings, brush my teeth when I came home after the festival. I didn't have to walk all the way to the bathrooms. So I think in that case, it is worth it. But to take an actual shower is not bad at all. My shower experience was not bad. I am an early riser, so I would get up at like 7 a.m. and head to the showers right when they opened. And I, it was fine. Luckily for me, I had like two different shower experiences. I think the first day I used a portable shower, it was fine, it worked, but it just, I wanted to feel more clean, so I tried to check out the actual showers. The first one I went into were like metal stalls. I just literally had a shower head and then a curtain and then hooks on the outside that you can just hang all of your stuff. The first day I like carried everything to the shower. I don't know, I just was not thinking. Um, and then I saw people who actually had like grocery shopping bags that I thought was really smart. So like if you didn't have a bathroom caddy, you could just get a grocery shopping bag to hang on the hook and have all of your like soap, shampoo, loofah, your change of clothes, everything you needed in there. Um, in terms of the water temperature, for some reason, my shower this the first day, I kept turning on and off. And I just remember like trying to shower fast and I was like, can I have more water please? And there was no water coming out and I had to wait like two minutes and then like for the water to come back on. So that was the only like shitty part of my shower experience. The next day I went into a different shower and that one was so much nicer. It did only have like four stalls versus the, the metal showers had like, I wanna say six on each side. So people were quickly in and out and I instantly found a shower. This one, I did have to wait a little bit more for a nicer shower. And this one had like a curtain, a little changing area and a little seat where you can put all your stuff. And then it had another curtain and then the shower. So I thought that was really nice. But the last thing about when you're camping in terms of like getting ready and showers and stuff is they do have like an area where girls can go and they have like mirrors and places that you can plug in to do your hair. There was an area that the girls were at, which was actually pretty clutch. And I found one like pretty instantly. So I would suggest if you are getting ready in the mornings, that's like the best time to go because barely anyone is doing, doing it. Plus, it's not hot. You have an area for girls to do their hair. And they also just have charging stations as well where people can just plug in. We brought ended up bringing like a blanket we could sit on. Now for your essentials, what you need to bring, and just general tips, more tips than what I've been saying. Make sure you know your surroundings. I think it's super important. If you care about your friends, you never know what's going to happen. Make sure you find where all the medical tents are where you can find ice, where you can find water in case of an emergency. I just think that's, again, super important. Make sure that you lock up your tent. That was another thing I was worried about is like, I don't know these people I'm camping with. Like, like I don't know, like what if someone comes over here and like steals our stuff while we're going into the festival? I was either locking up my luggage and all my stuff in the car or I was locking it in our tent. Next tip, the canopies. Make sure that you put down your canopies before you leave to the festival. I don't care what anyone says because the wind is strong. The wind was strong on day two. So somebody had to go back and put down all the canopies and thank God we did because we did see canopies that were all messed up. The tent, the top of the canopies were all messed up. And you know, when you're coming back from a festival, that's the last thing you wanna worry about. Also, there is a general store, so if you do forget anything, you can go to the general store and buy things like towels. I think they do have also some tents. I think they had some canopies when I was there, sunglasses. They did have slippers too, so if you forgot shower slippers, 
you can get some there. They kind of have everything that you need. I think they had some food and snacks as well. Um, obviously, it's going to be a little bit overpriced, but the prices were actually not bad. I think I saw like towels for $8, which was not bad at all. Another thing that helped me, bring a portable fan, one that does not plug in. I got this one from Amazon, and I will tell you it was my best friend. Another tip that I have that I wish that I brought is bringing more warm clothes. Like I said, it did get windy day two. I was cold. I had just brought like a jacket that I was going to wear at the campsite, but bring a jacket in case that you want to bring it into the festival. And then my last tip or piece of advice is bring a bandana or mask. No one, I feel like no one prepared me for how much sand I was going to inhale over the course of like four days. By the time I left Coachella, I feel like I was blowing out sand through my nose, which is really gross. But I just wish I brought a better bandana or you can bring a mask. And before I forget, here are some also tips that when you're in the actual festival. For me, I was like, I want to explore because this ticket was like $600 and I didn't just want to stay in our camp. But I would totally suggest you guys check out all the booths that they have. A lot of the stuff are free. We went into this like digital art museum that was 360. It was air conditioned. It was like really dope but like if you just want to chill that's a good place to do it definitely check out the dome the dome was really dope hp has this whole like projector that projects over the ceiling like this 360 view and it was honestly so dope there's also different stages that aren't part of coachella like there's a heineken stage where they have djs that you can go and just drink at the heineken stage there were also some speakeasies there as well so just make sure you explore the whole venue when you have the chance because I promise you it's worth it and will make your Coachella experience that much more memorable. But yeah, I hope you guys, if you're going to Coachella, I hope you have an amazing experience. Coachella is definitely a really dope and fun festival. I can't wait. They have hopefully a better lineup next year. Um, and then please don't forget to check out Ana Luisa for their Mother's Day sale. Again, it is buy one, get one 40% off. Again, I do have a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and support your girl. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Also, I almost forgot. Please watch my hype video. But bring a disposable camera. Do it. You will not, you will not regret it. I brought two. And here are all how the films came out. Please do it. You won't regret it. I promise you for the memories, it's, it's worth it. Okay, that's my last tip. See you guys later. Bye.